Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts with something kind of cool. Uh, this is a 1995 Ford Taurus SHO. SHO stands for Super High Output. Now you got to remember that the Ford Taurus was built between 1986 and 2019 and something like seven and a half million were built, but only a small fraction were super high output muscle cars. Now the big deal about the SHO, which arrived in 1987, was the fact that it had Yamaha designed dual overhead cam cylinder heads on top of a basic Ford 3 liter V6. More on that in just a second. But other stuff that was cool about the SHO was four wheel disc brakes and they were strictly four doors and strictly five speed manual transmissions up to a certain point. And that made these very special vehicles in their day. These had 215 horsepower and 200 foot pounds of torque, which was considered super high output. But again, in the mid 1980s, we were climbing out of the smog 70s and slowly gaining traction, literally and figuratively, with power. But inside this one, we can see right there, the manual transmission. And this 1995 is the final year that you could get a manual transmission. All subsequent Ford Taurus SHOs were automatic transmission equipped. Now at this point in time, 1995, you had your choice of an automatic, unfortunately, or that five-speed manual. Again, more on that in a second. But little details like this, the SHO nomenclature inside the car to remind the passenger, yeah, you're riding in a pretty special Taurus. Now, a lot of people say, Taurus, you know, well, these were muscle cars in their day. And again, as a four-door, it kind of stood apart. And Ford kind of marketed these things against, you know, potentially owners of BMW 3 Series cars and maybe 190 Series Mercedes Benzes, you know, entry level exotics. These were considered to be, you know, potentially in the same ballpark from performance and they were more luxurious and better equipped and appointed. But again, four wheel disc brakes was kind of a cool thing on this. Now, no Taurus SHO wagons, unless you want to talk about the one prototype that was put together for Car and Driver magazine. Ford actually said, you know what, we'll humor you, Car and Driver, we'll build you guys a Taurus SHO wagon which probably went to the crusher. But anyway, at the back of the SHO, we see the tail spoiler here, which certainly helps with aerodynamics. It was not there for looks. It was certainly validated in a wind tunnel. SHO on the rear bumper fascia right there. And dual exhaust, always on the SHO. You can see the chrome tips on both sides. Big uh, twin tracked with mufflers. High flow stuff, not there just for looks. And again, these are available in only five colors, silver, white, blue, red, and this green. And here's a can of Duplicolor touch-up paint. Somebody must have wanted to be able to touch up their car, rattle can that baby and fix it up. And again, this is a front wheel drive car, but here is the beginning of Taurus right here, 1988, well, two years in. And again, the SHO arrived in 89, not 87, excuse me. But again, built in America, all of these things, Chicago or Atlanta. And we look at the Taurus, you know, kind of a boring car in a sense, you know, and the, the only manual transmissions were the uh, MT5 with the... Uh, the Taurus, except for the SHO, but again, the MT5 was only available with the four banger. The 3.0 and the 3.8 V6s were strictly automatics. But again, the Taurus was essentially a family car of today and tomorrow. But again, the SHO turned that around. Now we get into this other catalog here, which brings us into 1991. This is similar to what we have here, the third year for the SHO, 1991. And this catalog is specific to the SHO. They sold enough of these things to warrant their own catalog in their day of production. And inside here we have the whole rundown, and there it is on the left. The visual beauty of the 24-valve SHO V6 is its dual plenum chamber design with 12 runners. Below 4,000 RPM, air is taken in through six long, small diameter runners that are tuned for low RPM breathing. Above 4,000 RPM, where the engine needs more air, butterfly valves open to allow added air intake through six short, large diameter runners. We'll see that in a second. Pretty cool though, a two-speed intake manifold. And again, the Corvette ZR1 had a similar deal in 1990 onward. But here's the SHO, kind of subtle, blacked out, but again, no fooling around here. 220 horsepower with 240, 200 foot-pounds of torque. Let's take a round, walk around this side here. This one has been through the ringer. It's certainly been in New England. It's got banged up here, kind of unfortunately. Quarter panels are starting to rust. It's, you know, it's definitely on its way toward... Uh, Back to square one, but we take a peek inside, and here's a close up of the uh, 140 mile an hour speedometer. The uh, tachometer red lines at almost 7,000 RPMs. And the beauty of this one, again, 
This is a last example, final year five speed. In fact, of the 9,567 SHOs built in 1995, only 2,038 had that five speed stick. And the crazy thing on this, first gear was good for 44 miles an hour, second gear 67 miles per hour, third gear 101, fourth 137, and overdrive, which was 0.74, you could actually go 143 miles an hour peg that speedometer. Cool stuff. And little details here that kind of put the Taurus SHO into BMW, Mercedes entry-level land, power seats on all of them, standard equipment, a uh, trunk lock right here. You can push that to lock it, and I just did. The trunk opening and the gas tank remote opener, those things right there, pretty cool stuff. But the real money, the real business on these things is under the hood. So we come up here, and again, these are front-wheel drive cars, but again, with 200 foot-pounds of torque, you know, you're not gonna really fry these too badly. And again, the five-speed transmission, you know, maybe only on 20% in this final year, 1995. And there it is, that thing right there. That's the magic. Now, here's the thing. This is basically Ford's three liter short block, but Yamaha and Ford collaborated on these twin cam four valve cylinder heads right here. The engine's in here sideways, and again, the Yamaha design heads allowed this thing to go to 7,000 RPM. But here's that two phase intake manifold here, super high output, 24 valve, dual overhead cam. And here's the long runners for low speed RPM torque the shorties here for high RPM. And in fact, if you know your funny car history, if you ever see like an old match racer with a Hillborn fuel injection, when you see really long tubes, it's usually something that's tuned for low end torque, short tubes, high RPM power. Well, the problem with that is that you couldn't get out and switch tubes on the way down the track. But in the computer age, you had a two speed intake manifold right here. So you had your cake and you got to eat it too. Low end torque and high RPM horsepower courtesy of this two speed valve and the equipment here. So a, a very exotic engine. And again, only seen in the SHO Taurus. Now, Taurus SHO would live on. In fact, here is, before you get onto that, here's 1995. This is the actual catalog for this model year car. And by this point in time, the Taurus and the SHO shared a catalog. Here's the basic SE, you know, mom and pa, grandpa would buy something like that. Pretty cool, whatever. You know, the Taurus SE, bucket seats, etc. You know, the LX moving on up, alloy wheels. Yeah, whatever, you know, pretty cool. But you get in the SHO, super high output. And there's differences not just under the hood, but we also see the hood on this thing. The flat hood is actually from the Mercury. And we look at this on the next page, and sure enough, you can see the differences in the hoods. On the left, we have the standard sort of uh, creased hoods. And if you look on the right, that red car, that's an SHO. And that hood is actually from the Mercury Sable. Yes, they did a little bit of switcheroo, double whammy stuff. So to give the Taurus SHO its own look, they utilized the flat hood from the Sable. Simple to do and the parts spin, just swap it around. Nobody knows the difference, we do. But anyway, a little later on, 1996, the next generation of Taurus would arrive, the round ones here. They went to a V8, 3.4 liter engine, but the irony is the V8 really wasn't that much more powerful. And here's the round. A lot of people just, if you don't like circles, don't buy one of these Tauruses from this period of time. Just lots of round stuff. Even the ads, subliminally, the pages have a circle, an, ov an ovoid theme, as they would say in design school. You know, kind of, uh, I remember these things very well. But again, the SHO version of this thing was the money. And uh, there's the unibody construction, etc. But when they went to the V8, which was also a, a Yamaha design, they were all automatics. And of course, the most recent Taurus SHOs have an EcoBoost V6, but the only bummer on those things, they made them, I think, what, 2009 through 2019, something like that. They went about 10 years. They have all-wheel drive, which is cool, but they gained about 800 pounds. They're 4,300 pounds. And so the final fourth generation of the Taurus SHO was kind of a bigger car, automatic only, all-wheel drive only, 365 horsepower, but again, muted by its 43 pound, 4,300 pound curb weight. But here we have it here, 1995, the final year for the five-speed manual in an old fashioned, but true, Taurus SHO. And again, this one here being a five speed is uh, one of under 3000 made of that 9,000 car run. So kind of a rare piece, final year SHO Taurus from this generation, final year stick shift. And it has that mighty dual head cam Yamaha, 7,000 RPM V6 under the hood. So if you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and share this with your friends, give us a like. And of course, uh, ring the bell so you know when the next video comes out in the junkyard vlog tomorrow morning.